Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Mart, where we draw fan art of the monsters of D&D. In the last episode we drew the Awakened Shrub and talked a bit about anatomy, exaggeration, and function over form. For today's episode we're going to try our hand at drawing a creature that is, for the most part, an exaggerated iguana, the Basilisk Infant. So most common depictions of the Basilisk are of large snakes with eyes that paralyze those who have the misfortune of looking directly at them by turning them into stone. However, the infant basilisk does not yet have these traits, and are just getting used to their feet walking. All eight of them. So let's get down to it. I have my cobbled together reference set to the side, which I'll show you in a bit. It's just a quick and dirty mashup of an iguana with the legs duplicated, but it should get the job done nicely. The greater basilisks have spikes that emerge from the back and head, but for the infant, we're going to assume those grow as the creature does. So... Let's go ahead and start by drawing this little baby iguana. So simplifying things down into the shapes, the body kind of looks like a, an almond of sorts, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to go ahead and draw the basic form of the head. And roughly where we want the mouth to go. So, for reptiles and other creatures that are a bit complicated, it's more of a getting used to the simple forms, especially if you're not used to the anatomy of such a creature, um, just to reduce things down in a way that you can sort of break it into parts and figure out where things will go from there. I'm not used to drawing too many lizards or basilisk infants in this case, so we're going to do the best we can and try to make things look appealing by connecting some lines and keeping everything flowing together. So now that we have the kind of the body and the head there, we're going to go ahead and block out where our arms and legs should be. So again, I'm just going to reduce this down to the simplest of forms, which are our circles for the arms and some circles for the legs. And kind of roughly keep it to where these these hips and shoulders would be on a creature. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse a bit just to get things going. Okay, so just to stop and talk about a few things here, for a reference picture on this iguana, it looks to be as if the limbs are very thin and of cylinder shape. So I went ahead and did that for the most part. It also seems like the shoulder is a bit high compared to where the, I guess you could call it the iguana's bicep uh, would be. So the shoulder is relatively large and it uh, takes up a lot of the upper part of the body as well as again this is cylinder shapes back at the legs so what I want to talk about as well is when drawing a ground for a creature to stand upon sometimes it helps to go ahead and draw like a flat oval shape just to get a rough idea of where these feet should be in relation to each other and as you can see uh, I've done sort of these kind of poses quite a bit with different kinds of creatures that I kind of have a rough idea of how these legs would spread out. So uh, with this oval shape that I just did right now, you can see how every point on these feet connects to it. So in terms of perspective, 
these can be seen to be resting on the same flat surface which is again what we want to kind of aim for so that way these legs look like they're actually standing on something instead of just floating um, arbitrarily so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, time lapse a bit again to fill in a basic kind of background that we had in the reference picture as well because I want to include a special treat in this so Okay, and coming out of our time lapse for a minute, in the background, I just want to add a bit more life to this scene. So we do have our infant basilisk that's kind of just hanging out next to this rocky outcrop. And also, um, we can see hidden in one of the cage caves would be the greater basilisk. So we kind of have like a, a size reference here. We can see how this one's small and this one has like a, it's going to have a little bit uh, of tiny spikes compared to this this older one that's in the background here just kind of hiding in the cave probably keeping a watch out maybe it's something that's a boss encounter for your characters that they they fight after picking on the the small infant ones for a bit so um, in my opinion when you want to draw scenes that have a bit of a life to them you want to kind of include things of where this creature would be uh, roaming about um, other creatures that would be in its area again if it's a, a child type of creature you definitely want the the mama or the parent in the background somewhere just kind of imposing as a looming threat just to add more flavor to the scene so we're not going to detail it much past this just enough to give the impression that something else is watching and I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse once again just to start going on uh, the details on this infant so I can start cleaning things up Okay, so being that this is an infant, and again how the, the larger ones have more grown scales and protrusions that come off the back of the head, we're just going to stick to, I guess you can describe them as softer scales, like perhaps these infant basilisks will molt a couple times in their life and, and shed before the, the scales and horns get larger. So for this one, we're not going to have it something that's going to be... Um, able to brutally rip your party apart but it's going to be something that you can definitely tell that this thing will have scales that develop further in the future and again this this works to 
conceal a bit of the anatomical uh, things that don't really make sense with a an eight-legged creature in the sense that we can have this extra detail that adds a bit more busyness to this part of the scene and actually just complements the overall figure. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the, the toes and the fingers here now and kind of uh, talk while I'm doing that for the most part. So for the, the hand of this iguana, it appears to just come out sort of like this. Let me get a bit closer. And the fingers appear to move in, I guess, odd directions. So we're going to go ahead and just draw very lightly some lines of where, on a reference, we can see that these are moving. And then figure it out from there. Now again, this is something that if, if you wanted to take the time to understand reptile anatomy, it would definitely make a difference in, I guess, the believability and the overall flow of such extremities. But again, um, just eyeballing with some certain techniques, we can get the, the same effect for the most part just to convey the same idea. So roughly we can see now where the the fingertips are going to go and the claws. So let's expand upon that and add some thickness to them by just duplicating these lines a bit away from it. So when I when I drew these finger reference lines here, I put a bit of distance between them just to allow room to go ahead and add some weight to them. And the overall, I guess, clawed hand came out looking pretty decent. But again, if you look at uh, other pictures of iguanas, their, their, I guess, fingers and toes display out in a bit of odd ways. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward a bit just to cover the rest of these these feet. So coming back for just a second, I want to point out um, again how we have this oval on the floor that tells us where our ground is roughly going to be. And our reference picture for this iguana, his feet, the back feet, are actually longer than the palms and they happen to have a, a longer toes as well. So being that this creature looks like its, its toes are moving in a awkward directions in the reference, we're going to try to keep it as grounded as possible just to keep things in tune with the rest of the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and draw flatter lines where they should be touching the, I guess, theoretical bottom of where the scene is. That way it looks like they're actually weighted on the floor. So again, it looks a bit awkward, but I think when we actually outline things a bit more and add more detail, it'll it'll look somewhat decent. So. Now, going into the mouth of this iguana, they appear to have a webbed lips, I guess you could say. So the part where their jaw goes up to their cheek looks to have a bit of a webbing right here, so we're just going to 
to add this as well and maybe a little bit of lines to indicate that this is a different texture on my reference picture I don't really see teeth however being that this is going to be a, a fantastical creature we want there to be teeth probably even just small ones just to kind of get the impression of this thing if it bites you it's going to hurt so we can go ahead and add just a, a couple itty bitty triangles in here to give the impression of teeth Go ahead and follow the the reference that we have, and draw a bit of where the bottom of the mouth would be from the inside, as well as the roof of the mouth from what we can see in this angle. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some more details, stick in a bit of lines, and we'll see what happens. Okay. So, if you have the spare paper to do so, I didn't have one ready, but I should have what helps to stop from smudging when you're going over pencil lines is to place a blank sheet of paper directly over the parts that you need to, to outline once more that way you can see now my hands moving across this blank sheet of paper instead of the actual drawing itself which would end up smudging everything so it's a little trick just to keep things neat and also allow you to I guess do what comes naturally to your style. For me, I, I kind of like to go over my lines a couple times, even when I've already, I guess, finished it. So that's going to allow me to do this without messing things up. So returning to a trick I mentioned in the previous video about rhythm and flow, especially uh, in terms of function over form. For this one, I'm going to draw the scales from the top of this creature's head all the way down to the back in kind of this descending form here. Nothing too difficult, mostly just kind of half circles here with a little bit of variation in the lines just to keep things interesting. But that gives the impression of scales.
Okay. So this creature, for the most part, is just about finished. But I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of a detail to the scene that he's in just to give it a bit more presence. So I'm just doing some simple hatching lines here to give the impression of it having shadow beneath it. I'm going to detail a bit of the rocks in the background just a bit more. Just to give the impression more that it's a part of a cave and a rocky outcrop. And now as a little kind of bonus tip here, um, drawing the textures of rocks is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. You just want to kind of have a general idea of how you want these things to look. So for example, this boulder here is kind of like a half circle, so maybe I'll draw a line in the middle where this half circle would be. And then go ahead and just add just a little bit of hatching on top of it. And a couple little specks here and there to indicate where the, the dust and dirt would go. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of these just to see how it comes out. So one last thing before I close up this video. just want to zoom in on one of these rocks I did here just to show that uh, giving the impression of something can have just as much as an impact as drawing the full thing in detail. So for some of our rocks, you see that they're just literally squiggles with um, a bit more squiggles on top of them. But taken as a whole in the scene, you can see the boulders in the background and you get the idea that this is a cave desert setting as well as a desert type of creature these little details complement the more complex figure in the center which will be our infant basilisk there you go creature number four challenge rank zero the basilisk infant hope you enjoyed stay tuned for next time and as always keep practicing and use your reference